Okay, let me just start by saying hello everyone. My name is Wipelo Sadidi Khaka. Uh, Wipelo, as a young child, uh, growing up was very, let me say, introverted, shy, but not afraid of trying new things. So, um, I guess I got a boost of confidence from my siblings, my sisters, my brothers. They helped me a lot in building my confidence or rather uh, breaking out of the shell of growing up amongst a lot of people, let me say, finding my own identity. So growing up, I grew up in Palape uh, with my mom and dad. And I'll just say it was really, it was really fun. <laughs> Having the best of both worlds, having both my parents there, uh, my mom being the disciplinarian and my dad being the, uh, let me say, the good parent, you know, good parent, bad parent thing. They were quite balanced. And sometimes my mom and dad would get into a tiff because I asked and she said no, he said yes and, you know, that kind of thing. It was really a, an experience. Um, finding out what I wanted to be when I grow up. I'll start off by saying, uh, God's given me a funny heart. <laughs> I care a little too much sometimes. So at one point I thought I could become a doctor and I was just like looking at things that doctors do, the long hours and seeing very um, disturbing scenarios or having to treat such disturbing scenarios. And I'm like, no, that's not for me. I'd probably cry in the, in the OR. And then um, there was a time where I wanted to become uh, an industrial psychologist. And then, you know, such things, um, being in the corporate world, make it interesting. But then finally, I was like, maybe a pursuit in the entertainment world, entertainment industry. Um, I realized and developed a love for performing and arts back in primary school. Uh, at Khaswa, every Monday morning, we'd have our assembly for 30 minutes. And every week, a class would be picked for them to present maybe a play, a poem, um, a dance, something. So uh, there were numerous times where my class teacher would be like, you're going to be Cinderella, you're going to be doing this. And I'm like, no, I don't want to read the stuff the show. I didn't love that kind of attention at that point. Uh, but I found it really, I found a rush. I got an adrenaline rush from performing, um, especially when it came to like musicals and stuff. Uh, so I guess, be, me being in the industry now was, it, it, it just, I guess it was just destiny, fate, driving me uh, towards that. The story doesn't get old for me. <laughs> I will always narrate it the way it happened. I was sitting at home one time and I was just browsing channel hopping and I caught a glimpse of Flavor Dome play playing at that time and I'm like let me just catch the rest of the show. After the show ended an ad aired. It, it just said are you 18 and above fluent in both English and Sotswana? Uh, you could be the next Flavor Dome presenter. Submit this and that and that to the BTV um, studios. From then, I was just like, okay, no, maybe. <laughs> Let me try this out. So I posted on Facebook jokingly, and people started commenting, okay, no, try this out. Try it out. Uh, you know, I think you would kill it. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know No, I'm not going to do it. So that day, I went to check on my sister, and I'm like, I'm jokingly posting this on Facebook, and people are actually saying I should go and try it out. And she's like, why not? You you have nothing to lose. So on the last day of application submission, I took the step and submitted my stuff um, at BTV. From there, I got a call. Um, I think two months down the line, I got a call. Hello, Sadie, we're inviting you to come and audition for us. And I'm like, okay, cool. This is interesting. On which day? On Wednesday. And I'm like, I have a test. Oh no, I'm gonna miss it. And they're like, no, just finish your test and then you can come through. Okay, I managed to write my test so quickly, but thank goodness I passed. <laughs> uh, I wrote my test and I made my way to the BTV studios. I get to BTV and I find 
hordes of people and I'm like oh my goodness what am I doing here will I even be able to stand out there's so many people here and what's funny is I found people of different personalities there you know the conservative type the observe the like observant type and the very confident type I loved one lady who was sitting um, in the corridor as we were waiting she came up to us and she's like good day my name is so and so I'm the next favorite don't present I'm not like oh Lord what's going on why why did I do this to myself and I was next in line to go into the audition at that point and I'm just like you know what you're going to do your best I go in there I felt horrible after <laughs> the audition I felt absolutely horrible the first person I thought of calling was my dad and I was like dad I don't know what I did I feel absolutely horrible and he just said listen whatever you did was enough and those words brought such calm to me I called my mom straight after that and she, and she was just like you know what you did your best it's enough it's okay carry on just keep praying that they will call you one month down the line on a Monday I get a call please come for audition for the second round of auditions um, on a Wednesday funny enough examination on that day again and then um, I was just like I don't know what's going on but maybe I, I, I don't buckle under pressure I don't buckle too badly under pressure let me just write my test and go for the second round we were shortlisted 18 people nine boys nine girls and let me just say that was the best of the best at that time and I'm just really honored to have been chosen or they've seen something in me that they felt I should share with the world flavor dome has been an absolute pleasure primarily because it's mixing um, two of my favorite things music music is just a, a beautiful thing something that I feel you know we could live with other without other things but music is just so fulfilling for me you know they will always try and compare you to uh, who's in the industry now or who's been your predecessor and uh, I think the reason why you are chosen is because there is something about you that should be shared with the world. The reason why I was chosen was because I am Sadi. The reason why Mosa was chosen was because she was Mosa. I'm just blessed to have the support of my family who are always um, the voice of reason or the voice of calm when I'm experiencing something. Uh, the first person I would think about if something's going to come out or if I feel like there's bad press or a, a negative situation, I think about my parents. They after I talk to my sister. Uh, she she will be like this is something you should expect but at the same time let it not break you you are not meant to break you with you bend yes but you're not meant to break um, I just take each day as it comes I tend to look at it as not a mountain but a journey up every step is difficult but it doesn't mean that uh, you won't get to the top Apparently I've been married to some white man and I'm only 24 years old. I don't know when the marriage happened. I don't know when I got divorced. So guys, how do you how how am I not invited to my own wedding? Like really? <laughs>
Uh, I joined the choir quite later because I was still young. I came to Sunday school. And that's where I actually got to sharpen my skills of singing. So this year I got the opportunity of working with one of the heavyweights in the Botswana industry, DJ Kuchi, as well as Fafi. Uh, this will be my debut into the music industry. And it's been a long time coming. People will be telling me, you should try this singing thing, you should do this. But I feel like um, I don't just want to open up that door, get in and uh, be without a plan of action. So everything comes at the right time. So I feel like 2016, definitely, this is what I have always been waiting for. <laughs> I love lounge music. I love to dance. So it's only appropriate that I, I go along that trail. As a musician, um, I love listening to soulful music, old school R&B as well. But then there are people that I listen to based on the fact of their vocal ability, uh, not because of that particular genre. I will, I, I, I'm not really restricted to listening to, to maybe, let's just say, mainstream soulful house or neo soul or this. I, I love music in general. So, our traditional music or maybe Mbaganga, just because um, music is so so diverse or limitless, or rather, let me say, without borders. Botswana is a very beautiful country. I'm proud of where I've been raised up. I'm proud of the people who have been put into leadership to take this country to where it is. What's significant, honestly, is the 50 years of peace, 50 years of um, development, 50 years of pushing that vision and mission. And um, I honestly just want to see more from our country. I think, uh, we are a little too safe, if I can just put it that way. We're a little too okay with being mediocre. We, are, we, we, we played safe a little too much, but uh, success is for those who will break the mold. For you to be seen and for you to be different, you, for you to be acknowledged that you are a force to be reckoned with, you have to be extremely unique, extremely different, and a risk taker. Safe risks, of course, <laughs> responsible. Where would I take you? <laughs> I would take you to this cultural show that happens every year. That's where Bakwena, where I'm from. I embrace it, I love it, I love my culture, I love my people. Uh, we celebrate who we truly are at this cultural site. We experience Mino Wasekwena, we experience the food, um, the storytelling, Konale. Uh, so many things that happen all in one day and I feel like it also doesn't restrict uh, uh, those people who are not actually Bakwena. We get to experience other cultures as well from that um, arrangement. So I would take you there my friend. You will not even flinch. You will have a great time. My little pink book. This is my Bible. Um, I may not read it every day religiously, but um, God has been the central central part of my life. Everything that has happened, uh, or everything I'm going through, I feel like God has ordained and He's there to run me through it. And um, another thing that this reminds me of, it holds great significance to me because my grandmother was one of those women who <laughs> she taught me the significance of the word in my life. My siblings and I hold that to a high esteem. So I guess it's a little piece of her being with me right now while she's in heaven.